Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show on NDTV Profit. I'm your host, Neeraj Shah. For the next 25 minutes, we'll talk about two key aspects on mutual funds. Whether small caps are overheated and should one move out of some of the small cap funds into mid caps. Maybe while staying invested over the longer term is a great idea. Is this something that you could consider or should consider? Um, and there are uh, you know, pluses and minuses for both. The second topic that we're planning to cover is what is the ideal holding period for a mutual funds? Uh, because uh, data seems to suggest that a lot of you, a lot of us who are putting in money into mutual funds are taking the money off after maybe 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. Uh, to talk about that, uh, we have with us uh, two guests, uh, one of them with me on the show already, which is Shetaj Mahajan. Uh, Managing Director and CEO of Complete Circle Wealth Solutions. In moments from now, we'll also be joined by Kalpen Parekh, uh, CEO of DSP Mutual Fund. Um, let's, let's start off with data that we've borrowed out of DSP Netra. It is a note that comes in from DSP Mutual Fund, and they talk about some of these trends. Shitaj, I want to start off with you, uh, because you guys advise a lot of people about what to do with mutual funds. What's been the advice been over the last, uh, let's say, uh, four to eight weeks when it comes to people who want to either put in fresh money into mid cap and small cap schemes or even with regards to their existing holdings. Uh, good afternoon, Neeraj, and congratulations for all time high. Today we crossed 75,000 on Sensex. So, great day to be with you on uh, this yeah. show. So, uh, coming to the question, what you have asked, uh, my, uh, my submission here is that when you come to uh, uh, talking about investing into small and mid cap at this juncture, we're telling people uh, they should look at that portfolio to invest in small and mid cap, which is which is aligned to a goal which is in excess of ten years. One, second, uh, just to go in market in small and mid cap space, they should look at a STP of three to six months. That's what normally uh, uh, what we feel at this level is advisable to clients because normally we take eight to ten weeks as the right uh, STP period to invest a lump sum investment. Now, if you are not a lump sum investor and you want to do a staggered investment uh, through SIP route only and you're a salaried person and you want to add uh, small and mid cap in the basket because you have seen last three years money doubling, then my uh, request and suggestion is that uh, keep keep 7 to 10 percent allocation only to small cap uh, fund. At the same time, you should align your long term goal, which is in excess of 10 years, uh, so that if, let's say, for some reason, if there is a major correction in small cap category, then it, uh, your, your short term goal should not be hampered much because sometimes gestation period is is still long in small and mid cap when it comes to recovery of fund. We have seen that in 2017 uh, at the peak of small and mid cap performance, what happened in 18, 19, 20, it took almost three years, more, maybe little over more than three years for that category to recover. So I uh, that's what we are suggesting uh, broadly to clients when it comes to allocation. Uh, on on the existing part, what we are telling our clients is that if you don't need the fund and uh, you are okay to have this uh, allocation of your portfolio to go a little over long from here four to five years, then there is no to do anything much. This is the problem with booking profit is that there is an element of capital gain. Now, if you are expecting market to fall more than the capital gain which you have to pay, then it makes sense maybe you can take off some uh, uh, profit of the day. If it's not there, then I think if you if you are aligning that portion of your allocation toward a long term goal, then there is no need to book. Yes, uh, further allocation one should look at going through uh, uh, a flexi cap only add a little more of multi cap flexi cap or a focus one category in your portfolio rather than just adding. Uh, if you are heavy on smaller mid cap, uh, adding smaller mid cap ones. Well, same advice and uh, viewers remember, I think an important point, if you don't need the money, uh, then the decision can be very different from versus you needing the money now or the course of the next six months. But the reason why we are also invoking this topic today is because some of the data points that have come out, we've spoken at length, viewers, about in the last two months about whether small caps are expensive or not, and we know they are expensive. But s some of the data points that have come out in the DSP note are very interesting. So, for example, one of the charts seems to suggest that the SMID, which is a small and mid cap space, the SMID median valuations just recently were double versus the 2007 peak. We talk about how the current cycle might be equal to 2003 to 2008 and how there could be rallies. But look at the difference in valuations currently versus what used to happen in the past. And Kalpin Parekh, uh, uh, whose team has authored this note, uh, joins us right now in the studio. Kalpin, great having you. Thanks for taking the time out. Um, does, 
you've seen many cycles. Does something like this worry you, part one? And therefore, the same question that I asked Shitij as well. What should an investor do? She or he is hearing you, hearing Shitij, and hear multiple other people talk about these valuations being expensive. What is the course of action? So yeah, over multiple cycles, there are two lessons that I have learned. Uh, one is that uh, there is mean reversion. Uh, the second lesson is that the mean reversion can happen later than what you think. <laughs> so uh, trying to be very rational, uh, I personally in my portfolios uh, have been underweight equities for last one year. And uh, that has not worked, right, because markets continue to rally. And within that, the small and mid-cap bucket continues to rally further. So uh, clearly, which is one of the reasons why we bring out these uh, uh, data-led, uh, evidence-based insights. But the disclaimer I would always say is that um, you know, markets don't always uh, turn the day we think it is not rational. And uh, hence, uh, our approach always has been that, you know, uh, design, you know, build asset allocation bases your goals and time horizons. And um, one generic view will not be suitable for all investors. So those who are just starting, uh, for example, today, uh, you know, small caps, again, if you particularly are, see, my worry is a lot of money is going into small cap companies directly. Hmm. And a uh, lot of, so if we take Nifty uh, 250 small cap index, our data shows that almost, um, you know, more than um, 150, 175 of them have uh, a very poor ROEs uh, or have a very poor liquidity or have uh, governance challenges or the promoter stocks would be pledged. And more money is chasing, uh, you know, these type of names because in the last one or two years, their stocks have gone up by 200 to 400 uh, percent. Not necessarily because of operating uh, matrix improvement. In some cases, that too, because uh, many businesses cyclically also do better than two years back. Mm. Uh, but that doesn't mean they are great businesses for a very long term. So I think I would only say that as long as investors know what they are buying and as, as long as quality of the portfolios are intact, uh, it's fine to be uh, it's fine to be market cap agnostic hmm. ultimately what you buy is uh, return on equity uh, likely uh, reasonable growth rates hmm. and at the right valuation and i think uh, across market caps one has to think on those lines but because uh, we're talking about a mutual fund show uh, and talking about funds what should an average mutual fund small cap investor Invest. do? So, I mean, I was looking at this chart. I was looking at the small and mid cap market cap to GDP yeah. hitting a record. That's the other wonderful chart, by the way, viewers, that you should look at. And just look at the disparity between what's happened in the past to where we are or were just maybe about a couple of weeks ago. So, based on all of this, sure. what should a small cap investor do currently? So a I'll small cap mutual fund investor. Tell you, I'm a, uh, I'm a retail investor investing only in mutual funds. Right. And a large chunk of my portfolio has mid and small cap through flexi cap funds. And uh, the flexi cap fund manager in my fund will navigate me in terms of, you know, moving up or down. Uh, the ladder of market cap depending on where there is value right so uh, i've outsourced my worries uh, in a way to him now if you as an investor are overweight small caps because you invested a lot and then that has compounded significantly in the last two years versus large caps your asset allocation has got skewed definitely see i, I would always say that you know um, we, we always say that buy more when there is blood on the street yeah but we rarely say that you know sell a bit more when there is flood on the street and this is the time when there is a lot of flood of money chasing uh, good companies and bad companies i would say that uh, I, I would just qualify once again that the beauty about small cap funds, active funds, is almost all the funds have an ROE of 17, 18, 19 percent. So we are selecting for you a better part of the small cap bucket. Hmm. Uh, it's wrong to classify that the whole small cap bucket is a bubble. Right. Um, so that's the first point I want to say. In fact, today morning, Sahil, who's made uh, this chart of Netra, I just told him that eliminate all loss-making companies and only see profitable companies and how is that valuation looking like. Hmm. So maybe in next Netra, we'll highlight that uh -huh. so that we have more context to this point. But having said that, if you're overweight small caps and if you have some need for money, take advantage of this rally and rebalance. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, in, in some sense, um, that's a common advice that is coming from both as well. And and sh uh, sh is, uh, come in. I mean, you gave your point. You heard Kalpain's argument as well. Um, I have a pointed question. Let's assume I don't need money right now, uh, but small cap funds, by and large, are choosing the right mix of small caps uh, in order to give me a nice ROE balanced portfolio. Should I still swap out of a small cap fund into a flexi cap fund because the flexi cap fund manager has the ability to load up on large caps currently, presuming that the valuations in large caps are a lot more reasonable than small caps? Or if I am a longer term investor, I stay put 
in small caps. One is that you stay invested, doesn't matter. Two is you try and take advantage of tactical situations as they present themselves. So, uh, Neeraj, uh, uh, the element where what, what is involved here is a capital gain element, as I mentioned earlier also. So, I'm saying uh, for the existing allocation, if you don't need the fund, you can stay on, stick on with the funds. But further allocation can be made, as I said earlier also, through FlexiCap or Focus and as said by Kalpain also. Funds where the fund manager has that, you know, uh, flexibility because it's a pool. When he buys sell, there is no capital gain which comes. So, you know, you can do the further allocation towards that side and you can reduce your allocation, not by exactly reducing in smaller mid cap, but adding on more flexi cap and focus fund category. That's what you can do. But when you want to redeem, then as I said, then you have to measure the uh, gain which you have to pay if you don't need the funds now, with the loss which you are expecting on the funds. So, I think uh, I agree with Kalpain that the, the portfolio on mutual fund small cap side is much better uh, in terms of its earning quality, in terms of its ROE, and but when uh, when crash happened, it happened across. It, it will not see whether its earning quality is good or not. But yes, these companies will tend to fall less. But yes, valuations are unreasonable. I agree. Having said that, I am of a view that one should uh, uh, stick on if they don't need the funds. But further allocation can be done towards flexi cap or focus fund category rather than just redeeming this uh, if you are not requiring the fund. Eventually, uh, not not now, but that's how small cap uh, or mid cap funds, uh, you know, functions. Their returns are not uh, rational in terms of on a yearly basis. They will keep on giving you some portion of return like large cap sectors normally they do. But yes, uh, uh, small and mid cap, they have their own set of rallies coming their way depending on when uh, money is sharing. Now, a lot of money is in SIP also coming through small and mid cap because many of the funds people deploy looking at the past return, which is not the right way of looking at it. Having said that, I think uh, uh, most of the fund managers are doing the right job in terms of diversifying the portfolio. As I said in the last couple of interviews also that many fund houses have increased number of shares to a different level only. So, you know, they are trying from their side, but yes, our job is to de-risk our portfolio also. So, if you don't need the funds, then further allocation, if you are making to a mission fund, can be done through FlexiCap and uh, uh, some other uh, focus category funds. You want to add something to this, Kalpain? Sure. So I agree with uh, everything that Shritej mentioned and uh, I'll just support some data points, uh, add some data points. If we take the last uh, almost 18 years since data is available for all the benchmarks, Nifty, Nifty 500, Nifty small cap and within small cap, the quality part of small cap. So we even recently launched an index fund which is only quality stocks of small cap because we were guiding investors that you're buying the wrong side of small caps mm -hmm. where aggregate ROEs are less than 10%, the poor quality ones. So if you only choose the 18, 20% ROE companies, what can be your outcome? So, you know, it's a selection out of that small cap bucket. Uh, there were two sharp corrections in the last 15 years, the 2008 to 13 phase when five-year market returns were zero and the COVID crash yeah. because of which the last five-year returns temporarily became negative. Now, in these periods, the Nifty 500, which in a way is a proxy to FlexiCap uh, strategies, delivered a lowest return of minus 1.5. Nifty delivered minus 1. Point, minus 1, so almost the same. Nifty small cap index fell by 6.6% over a five-year period, which is roughly a 35% absolute loss. So the other indices capital was, uh, you know, constant. Here you had a 30-35% capital loss. The Nifty small cap quality bucket delivered same return, lowest return, minus 1%. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm saying that I want to just bring the nuance that the market cap is not the issue. The quality of yeah, businesses yeah, yeah. and the price you pay is the issue. Now the second point why small caps with right quality are critical for a very long-term investor, notwithstanding today's so-called bubble valuations, is over a long period of time, median return of Nifty is 12.7, median return of Nifty 500 is 12.6, median return of the small cap index is 12.2. So with small cap risk, you're getting same return as large cap, no point in being there. But the median return of small cap quality 50 is 17%. Wow. Uh, now, of course, the starting point for all these returns is low valuation, yeah, which is not the case today. So the nuance I want to add is that quality, you know, tilts the argument for still being in small cap if you have a long-term time horizon, uh, because ultimately it is the quality of businesses which will determine what money we make. Okay. And, and viewers, therefore, uh, keep in mind, I, know, I don't want to throw this out of the dark at Chitesh, but here's the point. I mean, maybe you can do an analysis of the small cap funds that you might be holding, whether it's a DSP fund or some other fund, and try and see if the average ROE of the fund, if it's possible to dissect stuff like that, and, and see where your fund stays as well. If you're a direct equity investor, and that's a separate case in point, we'll do that conversation on some other show. But if you're a mutual fund investor, then maybe you can take studies like this 
after it's a hard earned money so do justice to that uh, sh um, uh, great, great conversation now before we go to the next query our next uh, set of conversations let's try and take in some queries because a lot of you write to us that take our queries so here's one query from dr dibya prakash pathwal i hope i got your name correct uh, uh, and dr pathwal is 62 years of age the goal is to buy a piece of land interesting dr pathwal okay and you want to do it through mutual funds so that's interesting okay so dr pathwal is saying that i wish to invest 1 lakh rupees per month through sips in mutual funds which can yield good returns can you suggest some funds to achieve my goal now dr pathwal i wish i had some idea about what is the time frame within which you want to buy it as well because that will also be, play a part here but effectively it seems um, kalpen i'll start with you and then go to shitish that the person wants wealth creation in order to achieve a, a goal whether the goal is buying a land or whatever else now at the current juncture if somebody wants to invest 1 lakh a month what would your ideal portfolio mix be see personally today like i just mentioned to you my mix is a mix of 65 35 65 in growth assets which is equities and uh, the balance 35 is a mix of gold and bonds and what did uh, it used to be i mean In, uh, uh, it has generally been in the range of 60% to 70% uh, okay. over the last 3-4 years. So generally, I have felt for the last 3-4 years that everything in the market has been expensive except the COVID phase. So my tilt has been towards uh, uh, equities, uh, uh, you know, 65-35 ratio. Uh, at best, I would have gone to 80-20 because I prefer some conservative fixed income. Uh, I think um, uh, you know, since um, the query is for SIP, SIP is a very beautiful way of investing because today's market highs become irrelevant because if you are doing a five-year, seven-year SIP, generally in a seven-year period. Period, uh, one third of the time markets go through a painful uh, low cycle. Uh, one third of the time they stagnate, and the balance one third they rise. So, uh, if an SIP is done with a seven, eight years sort of time horizon, you'll be able to average out beautifully. And um, uh, ideally, a flexi cap fund or uh, a balance fund, which is a mix of uh, 75 equity, 25 bonds, is reasonable. Why? Again, in today's context, I'm saying is today interest rates are at seven and a half percent. Uh, with some uh, you know cycle um, of uh, interest rates turning one can earn between 7 to 9% in bonds uh, you know over the next few years and um, generally stock markets at 25 uh, multiple are giving you 4 or 5% earnings yield plus some bit of dividend yield so probably from these levels equity and fixed income returns the gap will not be as wide as the long term gap is mm -hmm. so having some cushion of fixed income uh, in a portfolio is tax efficient is volatility efficient and can navigate keeping in mind even the age of the investor yeah. but not a financial advisor at all yeah, so yeah. take everything i say with a pinch of salt no no not at all i mean i wouldn't do that uh, dr bathwal if i were you i will take everything that kalpin parekh says without any pinch of salt uh, great advice but shitij uh, kalpin makes the point okay chalo he's not a financial advisor we would urge you because you would be advising in your team would be advising a lot of clients so 62 years person has a goal of wealth creation with 1 lakh rupees what should the ideal mix be if there are fund names that you can share nothing like it you know kalpen is an industry veteran and i i agree with what he said because uh, at his age uh, uh, maybe a market for him i maybe he can uh, allocate 20% to a nifty 50 and then uh, balance advantage funds uh, uh, and flexi cap funds is the right way of looking at it uh, you know that's the right uh, approach because he'll make some then on the fixed income side also because of the rate cut which are around the corner Uh, in fact, because tax treatment, uh, uh, if he is not in a tax bracket, then I will let, I will suggest him that he can put some little some money in G S E C fund also because chances for him making double digit return next one and a half years is there on G S E C fund also. It depends on that whether rate cut is going to come uh, in next one one and a half years, how it, how much rate cut is going to come. So fund wise, I think uh, you have uh, uh, Nifty Fifty. You can pick any any fund. Uh, Nifty Fifty fund. Uh, D S P has Nifty Fifty. I C F T has. H C F T has. It's an index fund. Most of the ANCs are offering that. Flexi cap. D S P has a good flexi cap fund. H C F T has a good flexi cap fund. You can pick that. So there are uh, there are mix of funds. Balanced advantage fund. You have uh, 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 BAF. You could have it for D S P, which is uh, then BAF of H C F T, I C F T. Both are doing good. So any of the funds you can choose between them. Idea is to be in the market and uh, uh, you know with this type of product mix of uh, let's say equity and BAF mix, he can target the level to twelve percent type of return over the next six years. That's what he can target. So give an example. If he has time on his side and uh, uh, if his balance budget fund allocation is little less and equity is more, then somehow is able to grow fourteen fifteen percent return. Then he might end up uh, making, uh, you know, uh, close about two CR in the next ten to twenty years time. That's what he can do with his one like offset. Uh, and if it's twelve to thirteen percent return, if it's coming on this way, 
then he might uh, uh, end up making one and a half CR. That's what uh, the type of wealth he can create for himself. So, but uh, uh, yeah, and then that's that's the purpose of his uh, wealth creation on his land buying will get solved. I don't know that because he has not mentioned the goal. Yeah, so I'm yeah. just thinking. About, no, the goal um, is goal is buying a land, but I mean, in, not in terms of the time frame. But yeah, which is why I said that you extend it to wealth maximization because whatever money is made will be used in in buying the land. We don't know the price of the land in which ways. Okay, the second query uh, from a relatively younger person, actually a young person, Arjun, age 33. The goal is lump sum returns. In some sense, very similar. Um, but Arjun is saying that we recently celebrated our son's first birthday and received a gift amount of 10 lakhs. Uh, well, we want to invest the money for mutual funds and use for education and marriage. Is it a good idea to invest in a small cap fund or should I diversify between mid cap and large cap funds? Well, Arjun, I think if you watch the first segment, you got your answer any which ways. But let me just try and very quickly extend that. Shitij, quick short answer on this. Uh, uh, diversification, I believe, into small and in, into large cap funds as well advisable, right? I think this this time because markets as you know uh, we've seen the data points also or all time high on the small cap and mid cap side. Once you look at a flexi cap and a focus fund, uh, that's what he can do. A STB again, it's a lump sum. I will still advise that he should look at ten to twelve weeks weekly STB rather than just putting the money uh, as a lump sum in flexi cap and uh, uh, focus category also. But uh, uh, rather than just allow the, allow the dust to settle and maybe valuation to get a little reasonable, then you can add further asset. Uh, in small and mid cap uh, in your portfolio. But right now, look at these two portfolios and do a STP. Don't do a lump sum investment at the peak of the market. I think that's important advice too. That do a systematic transfer plan. Do not invest at one go because you do not know what the markets will do over the course of the next three to six to nine odd months. So just d spread it out, whatever the time period that you may choose and depending on what your advisor says. But, um, you know, we don't have time for doing the second piece of this conversation. So I'll have to wrap it up with this query only or, or something around this. Um, and and Kalpain, uh, just the other part that um, you are, you, you told us what your portfolio uh, or bent is towards, but the way this conversation brought out this small cap, quality small cap portfolio, which is a deviation. I remember some time back you would come out, you guys had come out with a quant portfolio, which probably took some quality names and it was a very different thing. So what is the most exciting innovative product that has come out which people should uh, look at in uh, for the next uh, three to six years? So, so Neeraj, I've always learned that in uh, investing, innovation is generally not uh, healthy because innovation... But you're still doing it. No, so what we're doing is uh, we are, uh, at, on first principles, we are just making some tweaks. Okay. Because uh, when you buy the whole index, you get good companies and you get bad companies. All we are saying is how do you use elimination to remove weak companies or bad companies, which is what active fund managers do. But if you want to do the same in passive, uh, so quality is a very powerful filter because in the long term, you'd never want to own bad businesses. The risk of quality in the last few years has been that they've been so overpriced that a lot of them have been at 40, 50, 60, 70 times uh, price to earnings. Um, so, so while they don't have balance sheet risk or governance risk or promoter risk, they end up giving you uh, valuation risk. Mm -hmm. And when you buy something very expensive, undeservingly value, high valuation, first few years you could go through consolidation. So today, in the last two, three years, all portfolios with high quality tilt have gone through significant underperformance to the rest of the market, which means the froth is gradually coming out. Ah. But it's still there. It's still not you know, completely. Uh, so all these consumer names like Asian Paints and Instant Lever, they were all at uh, 2022 multiples. 10 years back. Uh, today, they are at two to three times of that multiple. So multiples have compounded more than profits. Yeah. Um, so at this point in time, if uh, you know, uh, the simple idea, would, I would say stick to simple ideas. Uh, active FlexiCap funds is, is my first bias. Uh, active uh, balance funds, which is a combination of FlexiCap and bonds, uh, is my another bias. Or if you want to do index funds, index funds with quality filters. Uh, are important, particularly in small and mid caps, because in small and mid caps, for every stock which gives you speedy returns, there are five yeah, which collapse. Yeah, exactly. So you want to avoid sure. that. So in small and mid cap, use quality as a filter. Uh, otherwise, uh, active funds, uh, combination of these two is great. Great. Okay. On that note, we are out of time completely on this show. We missed out on another topic completely. Maybe uh, we'll save that for another time. But uh, Shitij Mahajan, uh, take a moment to thank you for joining us uh, from on the show today. But look forward to talk the second topic, uh, Shitij, in due course sometime next week. Uh, and Kalpain, take a moment to thank you for joining us in our studios. Really good having you. Thank you. Right. And viewers, uh, that's all that we have on this edition of the Mutual Fund Show. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned to NDTV Profit.